Are we missing anybody, Paul? I don't, let me see. I think we're all here, right? It's here, Bill, yep. I think we're all here. Okay, I'm gonna call the meeting to order if everybody's okay with that. I think we're okay. Welcome everybody to tonight's town council meeting. It's Monday, January 11th at uh, 7.01. And uh, uh, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll please? Michael Dos Santo. Present. Valerie DePaolo. Here. William Dietzik. Here. Jim Morelli. Here. Christopher Palmeri. Christopher Poulos. Here. Tom Lombardi. Here. Paul Zaplinski. Here. Victoria Triana. I'm here also. Could we have the prayer, please? Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening to ask for your guidance and direction and to keep us focused, clear as we seek your help. Amen. Amen. Would you join me for the flag salute, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. May I have a motion on the minutes from last meeting, please? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from December 14th and January 14th. I'll second that, Madam Chair, Mike Del Santo. Okay, Mike Del Santo seconded it. Thank you very much. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any deletions, or, um, any abstentions or uh, <coughs> or uh, absenteeism? No, huh? Madam, Madam Chair, I would note that the minutes from the 1-4-21 meeting show I was absent. Um, I was late. I was about 15 minutes late, right. but I was you present did. for the meeting. Yeah. I'll abstain to the extent that I wasn't there from the beginning. So, Madam Clerk, we need to amend those minutes to indicate that uh, uh, Councilman Dizik was, in fact, there <clears throat> at the uh, executive meeting on the 4th. Is that correct, Bill? Yeah. The yes. Fourth, yes. Okay. Madam Chair, is it, I'm sorry, this is Paul. As a point of order, can we just ask the council people and participants to manage their, their microphones on mute when they're not speaking? That would Thank help you. me with uh, making sure that I'm not having to mute people when there's background noise. Thanks. Very good. So we'll, let's all just check that and and uh, kind of remember that when we're not speaking. Uh, that'll be great. Okay. Very good. Uh, Councilmatic communications. Before we get started, I, I I normally let everybody else get started, but there are a couple of things I do want to begin with. And the first thing I wanted to do was to announce that we here in Southington we are offering an extension on our tax bills until April the first, and so. Uh, if you normally pay in January uh, and you find things kind of tough because of COVID, we've decided to extend it to April 1st and uh, hopefully that'll help folks. And so that's the first thing I wanted to get out there right away. Uh, and I, does anybody have anything about the tax bill they want to add? Okay. And, uh, and the other thing I wanted to do was I, uh, I, conferred with the chief of police, Jack Daly, and I asked him if if I might be able to share some of the things that we spoke about. Uh, we had a meeting of just the council and uh, 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 Chief Jack Daly and also Chief Bill, uh, Deputy Chief Bill Palmeri uh, in executive session. And what I'm going to share tonight are not really things from executive session. There are things that uh, uh, the chief and I went over and I thought would be informational to the public. And so um, we uh, talked about uh, vehicle burglaries and thefts and overview for Southington. And I, I'm going to go very quickly with just a few few facts so that the folks will know what we're talking about. In um, 2019, uh, we had 41 stolen vehicles in the town of Southington. In 2020, that number went up to 94. Uh, of that 94 stolen vehicles in Southington for 2020, uh, 55 vehicles had keys inside of them. So half of the cars had keys 
uh, inside of them. Uh, 10 vehicles had no keys. 28 vehicles, it was unknown whether or not the keys were inside. And uh, actually, uh, 13 of the 94 vehicles were, sto were stolen from garages. And uh, one of the points is that these are happening all over town, not one distinct area, uh, but they are. So the other thing uh, that uh, uh, the stolen vehicles that were recovered, uh, the vehicles were recovered in Hartford, New Britain, Waterbury, East Hartford, and actually right here in town. There were uh, nine vehicles recovered from here in town. The other area that the chief uh, wanted me to let folks know about was the burglaries that happen when people go into the car to steal and um, items or whatever. And in 2019, we had 114 car burglaries. And in 2020, we had 410 burglaries, a huge increase as you can, you can see. Uh, once again, uh, they happened all over town. And of the 410 vehicle burglaries for 2020, 227 vehicles had items taken from them. 166 vehicles were entered, however, no items were taken. And 17 vehicles had no entry gained and were labeled just an attempt. Um, again, they happened all over town, so we need to be diligent. Of the vehicle burglaries, 322 of the vehicles were unlocked. So out of 410, 322 had access because they were not locked and people, the, the perpetrators just went in. Six vehicle, vehicles were burglar, burglarized while even inside an open garage. And vehicles were locked, and uh, 16 vehicles were locked at the time, and 13 vehicles were damaged. Um, so we there was a great loss and i would just say that we are not unique in these in these burglaries we had a we received some information on comparison of local of towns that border us and um and some that don't border us but are, are similar to us and each one of the towns saw a marked increase in all of these so it's just not southington uh it is uh around the state uh the 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 police department has engaged right now in, in many crime prevention strategies. I can't get into all of them. We'd be here all night, but uh, they're doing a wonderful job. Uh, every night there's a public service announcement just to remind us to car uh, to lock our cars, take valuables out, um, and uh, certainly don't leave our cars running at all, uh, park in a well-lit area, and secure our garage doors. Um, and if you can, you can certainly get a, um, a security system that would uh, show uh, your driveway and, and your car. And uh, the current crime strategies, one of them is uh, that we have uh, Officer Christopher Laporte. Uh, he is reaching out to uh, all of our neighbors and friends, and he is our uh, uh, crime prevention officer for, for the town of Southington. That's Officer Christopher Laporte. He would be very happy to speak with anyone who might have questions or su uh, suggestions. Um, and he is working very closely with the Neighborhood Watch. We have heard all about the, the wonderful Neighborhood Watch groups that are forming all over Southington. Uh, as I said, uh, we have over uh, 3,500 people who have signed up to watch their neighborhood and they're divided into neighborhoods. And so, uh, when there's a, a car that may look unfamiliar doing something that would might appear to be suspicious, uh, the neighborhood watch knows what to do. They call the police. The police uh, go out and um, and actually uh, try to get there as soon as they can so that they can make uh, an investigation. I would just encourage all of us to keep an eye on our neighbor's property and our own. If there's something that seems wrong, if there's a car that we don't know, not to get involved other than to give the police a call. They'll come out and they'll, they'll, uh, they'll check it out and make sure everyone is safe and, uh, and keep Southington safe. You know, the more difficult we make it for criminals, the more they'll stay away from town. I mean, that's just how it is. So neighborhood watches are wonderful. And there's the uh, Michael Leone has start, started something that uh, uh, has gone 
all over town. It's blossomed forth and we're very grateful to every citizen who is standing up to be counted for the neighborhood watches. And um, uh, I think that uh, we'll see much fruit from them. Uh, they're working with, uh, with the police. They understand the role. Uh, they are, uh, 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 are great people and, uh, and we don't want anyone taking undue, unnecessary chances. So I just wanna thank, I wanna open up the council. If there's anything else that you feel that would be important that you felt that feel that you could share with the public, you know, but we had uh, a safety executive session and we were not allowed to speak for what happened from that uh, at this time. But uh, the overview that uh, the chief provided for us tonight uh, was uh, pretty compact and, and very clear on what's going on. So I don't know if anybody has anything they wanna add. Yeah, Chris Palmieri. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I said, um, especially after the facts that you laid out tonight um, that the chief provided. Um, I didn't think it was possible to be more impressed, honestly, with, with the work of our department, but they, um, the, the confidence I have in them, like I said, it's, it's grown exponentially just because um, of the way they laid out everything and how they're handling the situations and looking out for all of our residents. So um, again, all, to all our police officers, um, just want to offer them um, true appreciation for everything they do each and every day. Um, so it, it really, it really means a lot. Yep. If if I could also before the meeting gets too far, it, it, and I actually kind of want to tie it into to what we just said. Mm -hmm. If I could just make a quick statement. Sure. Um, I, I I just want to share with everyone. I like so many others was shocked appalled, saddened, and embarrassed by the events in our nation's capital last week. Um, while we are all entitled to our own political beliefs, I believe we need to express them in a dignified, respectful manner. And unfortunately, that's not what we saw unfold before us all on TV last week. Um, so in light of the riots resulting in the loss of life, I would like to ask for a moment of silence, if it's okay with you, in honor of those that lost their life, especially um, the police officer at the Capitol that lost his life in the line of duty. So if that's okay with you, I'd like yes, to ask for a moment of silence. And I, I appreciate that. Right now, why don't we just take a moment of silence and uh, just uh, uh, pray or think on uh, how um, devastating that all was. So let's just take a, a moment, everybody right now. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Chris. That, uh, that thank, you. thank you. Very, thank you. Very uh, important. Thank you. Very good. Madam yeah. Chair. Yes. Uh, whose hand is up? Oh, oh, Tom. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, uh, Councilman Palmer. I very nice words there. Um, I just want to highlight something very brief that that I took away from the meeting with the with the chief, and that is a reminder to the public. Let's let's focus on the simple things here. Lock your doors. Lock your cars, keep lights on, and if you see something, call the police. It's as simple as that. The neighborhood watch groups are doing a great job, but let's keep those simple things in mind to, to the residents. Call the police and lock up. And that's a reminder that uh, it, it's almost like, you know, with COVID, wash your hands, social distance, all those things. It's something that just has to be reiterated over and over again. And um, that was a simple takeaway from our meeting that I think the public needs to hear over and over again. And under no circumstances should we be approaching anyone or That's right. confronting anyone. Let the police do the job, okay? Exactly. Right, Paul, I saw your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, I would also like to reiterate, uh, Chris, thanks for, the, uh, thanks for the kind words at the beginning. I think they were... Uh, thoughtful and, uh, and on point. So thank you for that. I had two items, Madam Chair. The first is um, on the auto theft. I wanted to just, you know, I wanted to put it out there. And, uh, you know, for those who might not know, I'm one of those victims of the auto theft in our town from this year. 
you know, this past July, I had, my home was invaded. Somebody came into my house, into my garage, went through my personal belongings and my vehicles and opened my garage and left, left my home with my wife's car. You know, this, this shook my family to the core for quite a long time. I mean, it's only been some months, but you know, when something like this happens to you, it's, it's pretty, um, it's pretty, it's pretty tough on, on, you know, when you have, um, a significant other or wife or kids and you see, you know, the things that they're doing and how they react and how they're worried about it. It's not easy. So I understand what's going on in our community and I understand why people want to, um, do the things that they're doing to, uh, to try to, uh, you know, dissuade or make Southington a place that is not, um, not easily uh, uh, taken by some of these people who are doing this. So um, I, I want to thank the neighborhood watch. I think it's a great thing. I'm really happy that um, they've made contact with our, our police department and they're getting, uh, you know, the right, the right coaching and the things to do. And, and again, you know, um, we, we have to be really careful at not taking matters into our own hands. You know, it's uh, as much as we sometimes want to feel like we're doing that. Um, I can say firsthand that, I've had a great experience with the Southington Police Department. The night, um, in the middle of the night when it happened for me and my family was awakened, um, they were very good, they were kind, they were gracious, but they were uh, expeditious in helping to locate the vehicle, um, uh, helping us to locate the vehicle and get it recovered very quickly. Um, so, uh, and, and then throughout the after process, uh, the days and weeks ahead, there was constant communication about um, some of the things that were going on um, that, that they were keeping us involved in. So I wanted to thank the Southington Police Department as well for uh, all their efforts. I know they don't do this just for me or for any of you or, um, you know, any one person in our town. They do it for everybody uh, and they do it across the board. They, you know, they are uh, working hard. I know that um, from what I've heard that, like Chris said, um, you know, we couldn't be more impressed at, at uh, the plans that they that they are working on day in and day out to keep our community safe. I will say that um, I'm hopeful that this also gives us an opportunity uh, to reflect not only on, you know, uh, the things that we can do as neighbors and community members, but also that our state can do to help us. You know, I think, you know, we've heard and seen on um, different communications throughout, uh, you know, the, the news outlets over the last couple of years that there are laws that are out there that also, you know, could be looked at in the future. And, um, you know, how can we take what we've learned in the past and we've built off of and how do we make it better to, to further protect ourselves in the future? And I'm hopeful that um, that is also something that as we learn more from this that we can that we can look at in the future. My second item, Madam Chair, is I'm, I'm very happy um, to report and uh, wanted to thank uh, the American Legion, um, the town manager and the town staff and uh, Megan Danko and her family. The last meeting we had before the holiday, I had mentioned that we were gonna have a very small flag raising ceremony um, at town hall. Uh, Megan Danko had the idea to, to do this uh, with, her, uh, with her family and uh, we got a, a flag donated and uh, we raised it. Uh, we had the, the great help of the American Legion who helped us ensure a proper ceremony. Uh, and uh, we honored the military folks who were not able to be home for the holidays uh, during that ceremony. And what we'll do is we plan to lower the flag tomorrow ceremoniously with the American Legion. Um, they're gonna fold it properly for us and we're going to ensure that it gets to the family so that they can have it as a um, a memento of their good deed to the community and to those who served our country. Thank you, Madam Chair. Excellent. It was an honor to be there. It was wonderful. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have something. Yes, Mike. Yep. Uh, okay, thank you. Just to echo the sentiments by Mr. Palmer, I uh, couldn't agree more. Our Southampton Police is tip top. I'm looking forward to um, when they make some arrests, and I'm also looking forward to see what happens to some of these folks who uh, get arrested. So I'm very interested in that. Um, as some folks know, I do work for, for, the, for the judicial branch here in the state of Connecticut. So I put some feelers out to some of the people that I work with 
to find out. I know there was a diversionary program that was supposed to take place uh, about a year and a half ago for these particular types of incidences. And I understand that that diversionary program has not been set off the ground yet. So which I'm a little concerned about and a little confused about, I understand that the pandemic may have something to do with it, but I'm trying to get some answers as to what's gonna happen to uh, folks that are arrested for doing this. Um, right. We've heard there's y they're youngsters, we've heard they're adults. Uh, I'm very um, interested in seeing what is stopping folks from doing this. And if there's nothing, then we're in for a long haul. You know, um, I think it's a shame that we have to, you know, park our cars inside our garage and take our keys out and lock the doors inside our garage. Mm -hmm. um, that's a real problem for me. Mm -hmm. So, but then again, if uh, individuals are getting away with stealing automobiles or breaking into automobiles, it's never going to stop. So um, I think it's, it, it'll behoove us to find out what's happening down the line when someone is actually caught and arrested. Well, that's what I'm looking forward to finding out. And Michael, we had a little bit of a discussion amongst ourselves also saying that there's certain things that we as a council can do. If uh, someone is uh, apprehended in town, uh, that we as a town, as a council and as, as a community uh, need to have a presence in that courtroom. We need to let the, uh, the judge and uh, the prosecutor know that we are we want to seek justice for those people that have lost their car those those, those feelings that uh feeling victimized that they are going through as paul so eloquently said um so we we have talked about that we should also be ready to stand for this community in the area where we can you know uh besides being on the neighborhood watch that that we would make ourselves available for uh, the court and the prosecutor to let them understand the victim's impact uh, on a situation like this in the town, as well as standing with the victims on it. So, I know we talked that, about that, that. That's right. That's right, Victoria. I agree with you 100%. Right. So we'll see how that pans out. And the only other thing I had is um, a broken record, but um, shop local. The holidays are over. Uh, I do know some local businesses in town had a little. Had a little bonus with the, with the holidays with gift cards, but now that it's January, it becomes a slow time of year. And, um, you know, uh, fast food is good, but supporting local is better. Um, you know, uh, support our local restaurants, support our local small businesses. Uh, they need us now more than ever. That's it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, Madam Chair, on the, as a follow up to Mike's comment and, and your comment, it, would it behoove us to ask the town attorney today? Uh, you know, I know that the neighborhood watch was instrumental in uh, in reporting uh, the uh, recent arrest that's out there. Can we ask the town attorney to help us uh, follow up on that with however that case is being prosecuted and ensure that the 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 fruits of the labor of our community and our police department are uh, being followed through on? I think that's very important. And uh, what I'd and like all of them, not just filter. one, but all of them, all of them. Uh, what I'd like to do is filter through the town manager and to, uh, uh, so that uh, he can also his office and, and, um, attorney, uh, Taylor Taylor's office can keep us informed of the status of these, these cases as they come up. And, uh, uh, I think that's a good idea. So Mark, can we rely on you for that? And Jeremy, yeah, normally, normally, uh, what will happen is if you're, if you're a victim, you get notified, but I'm not sure we'll have to double check and I'll leave it up to Jeremy, uh, town itself. When it comes to a, um, a vehicle theft may not be a quote unquote victim under the statute, but, um, we could certainly stay abreast of the cases. That's, uh, that's something that Jeremy could do right on the computer. All the, all the criminal cases, as Mike knows very well, are all on the computer, but, um, he'll have to double check the wit to make sure that we can. I'm not sure the town attorney can give a victim statement when it's not town property, but Jeremy will check on that. I, I understand completely. Thank you, Jeremy. If if you could just keep us informed, yeah. that would be just good. just the mere fact that you know I, I I understand the press is on our meeting tonight. Just the mere fact uh, that the community knows and uh, folks know that are thinking of doing something, we're going to be involved. We're going to follow the cases, and you know we're not going to be terrorized. That's great. So, thank That's you, great. Madam Chair. Thank you, everybody. Are there any other uh, councilmatic communications? Tom Lombardi. Uh, 
Yes. Oh, Val, please go ahead. I, I had one one other oh, thing. My original comment no, was Tom. on. Go ahead, Tom. Okay. Thank you. The other item I have um, on a on a brighter note. I'm usually announcing this earlier in the year, but I have some positive news to share from the YMCA. And it luckily for the rest of uh, the eight members of the council, you will have the opportunity to join me on February 27th for the 16th annual Polar Plunge. Oh, yeah. So this is something that is a is a fun event every year. It raises over sixty thousand dollars for the YMCA for for kids to attend camp in the summer. So. I'm just going to run through briefly the, the teams this year. Uh, the, the featured team is Harford Healthcare. That's going to be Karen Fasano and Gary Havican. Yeah. Uh, we have Team YMCA, Team Cheshire YMCA, Team Southington Police, Southington Fire Department, Board of Ed, Southington Politicians, which is all of us on this call. Plus, I'm, I'll, I'll follow up with an email to the rest of the, the uh, elected boards. Team Southington. HR manager Michelle Passamano is running that team. Team Lake Compounds, the Leaping Ladies, and the SHS football team. So be on the lookout. Uh, I'm sure many of our friends and family will be posting donation links. And let's uh, let's try to support the YMCA for this great event. Yeah, Councilman Poulos, it's on. <laughs> Actually, and now now that Councilman Chaplinski has has. Uh, okay. He he always <laughs> seems to have a business trip come up around this polar plunge weekend. Yeah, no China this year. If let's, I'm let's... out of town that weekend, I'll be sure to give you a check, Tom. I, I don't know. I think I have a. I think I have to be somewhere, but I'll, I'll. If I'm here, I'll be there. But if I'm out of town, I'll give you a check. Thank you, well, I Tom. I meant you said you said July twenty seventh. No, <laughs> yeah. oh, February. I'm there. I'm just February very 27th. happy that uh, Acting Chief Paul is with us tonight because we certainly uh, would want our emergency folks helping us out. That's right. Yeah. That's all I had. So I'll I'll send an email out to you guys. Very good. Anybody else have any council matter communication? Yes, Val. I'm sure. Um, so, Tom, I'll be sending you a donation, okay? Thank you. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. <laughs> so, I just wanted to, um, you know, maybe on a on a lighter note too. You know, there it's been such a dark time with uh, with COVID and and with some of the things that are going on. So, I was really struck by the um, the, the different acts of kindness that have been highlighted in the paper and that we're seeing in emails. Um, I know assistant um, or acting chief uh, fire chief Jimmy Paul had sent us a letter about Janet Mellon and yeah. and her staff at community services. Um, the uh, luminaries by Morgan uh, McNamara, right. and then there was the uh, Kristen uh, Formeister, I think her name is, that um, came up with the adopt a child program um, for the state, and then she had a group from St. Thomas Church jumped on that and. You know, they were delivering gifts uh, themselves. So, you know, just in, in all this darkness, I think it's so important that we find some light. And um, it's just so wonderful to see that our community, and I'm sure there's so many more acts of kindness out there, you know, large and small that we don't know about. So I just wanted to say to our Southern community, um, you know, that it's, it's uh, very comforting. I yeah. think for all of us to see. So I, I just wanted to, you know, bring that up. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Uh, anybody else? Madam uh, Chair, I, I have one quick comment. Sure. This is Bill. Um, I just wanted to comment, um, kind of changing gears here, but the tax bill extension. Yes. Um, I, I just do want to say I heard a lot of positive things recently, um, really showing that Sullington is a business friendly community. Um, so, you know, the bill may not help the average person who has their taxes paid as part of their mortgage payment, right. but for small businesses, for landlords, for people who don't have their taxes escrowed, um, you know, it really helps. It gives another quarter for cash flow. Um, and it's not just, I, it's just not just that this council passed it um, through, you know, Mark's leadership, but really it's the way our town staff is explaining to people. Um, you know, I have, I, I've heard from people who own properties in multiple towns and they basically said, I'm getting nothing from such and such a town, but Sullington's right on, right on point. So I really do want to tip my cap, um, you know, especially in this, these times, um, not, it's really important. So I, I, we were doing a great job of it and it's really helping people. Absolutely. And Mark, thank you for your leadership in that. 
and uh, of course the town staff. That's uh, that's wonderful, Chris. Can I just ask for clarification? Was th wasn't this part of the governor's executive? No, this is that right? Yeah, this is actually. I'm sorry. You want me to? Check? Yeah, this was uh, actually a new executive order that was just passed right uh, right before Christmas, I believe. Um, and the executive order said that the uh, any council that uh, that uh, approved this back in July, which of course this council did, uh, the manager has the right to extend it uh, without further action of the council, as long as there was as long as there was uh, no objection from the council. Obviously, I emailed all of you to make sure that it was okay, and all of you were were very much in favor of it. So um, I did extend it on behalf of the council. So uh, the governor allowed us to do that without a formal vote of the council, as long as the uh, uh, the chief uh, the official uh, approved of it. So I was happy to do it based upon obviously the council's uh, approval. Great, very good. Thank you. Okay, we're all set to move on then. Okay, um, the report of special committees. Uh, Paul, will you uh, uh, take open space, please? Yes, Madam Chair, I've got a um, few items to report. It was a light, a light meeting due to the holidays, but um, you know we've we've had a um, a few nice properties in 2020 that the committee has uh, worked through our process to. Paul, can you can you um, put your voice a little higher on your on your computer? It's it's kind of soft. Sure, let me move this a little closer. How's this? Better, I okay. think. We've had a number of properties um, that we've uh, that we've passed through the committee and also through um, uh, town council for execution. So that's great. Um, some some of the things that we're continuing to work on that we discussed in the last meeting. Uh, we have a couple roof projects on some barns as part of our farm heritage uh, and open space uh, activity. The Grosky uh, barn and the leaf barn, which um, we have plans over the next couple of years to um, patch those up. We have some active leaks leaks in some of them and and have some deterioration in some of the barns. So those are on our list to uh, to remediate as part of our, um, our roof process. Um, we uh, property maintenance was discussed and uh, you know, some of the markings on the parcels that we own as well as uh, the hang that. Uh, we do in the in the fields that that is in good order and ready for 2021 uh, on the farm heritage specifically uh, we have some needs for uh, some field maintenance uh, at leaf and also uh, plans to uh, discuss this upcoming meeting um, solar on the roof at leaf so we're going to be looking for support there in the future to try to bring some solar panels there to reduce electrical costs so more to come on that and uh, then Chris has been uh, working on the, as well as town staff, on the relocation of the shed to Pleasant View. It looks like uh, I received a communication today that here in the next uh, couple of weeks, um, we have a plan to try to get some additional help on that and hopefully get that over to the Pleasant View site shortly. And then looking to uh, next year, one item is we, you know, we want, we're looking for some volunteers uh, to hopefully help us with the restoration of the front entrance of the Pleasant View site next to the Apollo with some, uh, you know, a new fence through some volunteer efforts and also a new entrance way. So that's it, Madam Chair, for open space unless uh, Chris or Jim feel uh, that I missed anything. Chris, Paul, like can, I just ask, can I just ask a question? Um, because I had to leave a little bit early from that meeting. I had submitted, um, as you know, I met with Mark Ramsey. Um, we have a, a a wish list, if you will, the, the amount that LEAF does for this community is immeasurable. Um, our Ramsey really each and every year just goes above and beyond for for our town, our students, our, our uh, residents of any age, really. Um, there were some items that that potentially would be part of the budgeting process. So I don't know, Paul, maybe you and I can meet with um, the town manager and see about any possibilities of adding some items in, in the manager's budget? Yeah, we did. Uh, I did ask uh, staff to provide that to Mark. I'm not sure if that made that to you yet, but if it hasn't. Yeah, um, actually, I have an update on that. Um, I took I took your two roofs out of your budget and put them in my budget. So you'll sh you should have the funds you need. Um, I have a, well, you all know because you voted on it. Uh, we have a townwide roof program, which I'm doing over several years. 
So I added the two roofs that you're talking about into my program. So now it's off your budget. So uh, the money you had it allocated toward that for your budget is no longer in your budget. So I believe Dave uh, Lavalle told me that you should have enough money to do what you need to do now. He's going to Fan update Fantastic. On that, Chris. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, Mark. Oh, there was a stipulation that uh, the stipulation that the two of you will be on the uh, the roof uh, July and August. You'll be doing the tiring on the roof. So I'll see you then. <laughs> I'll hold the roof, Chris. I'll hold the rope while you're dangling. <laughs> Josh style. Yeah. No, but we do. We also, Chris, to, to your point, there is a a grant also as part of that maintenance that we're looking to uh, uh, to work on, and um, that's something that I need to follow up with you on this week. Uh, Mark's looking to apply for a grant this week on. Um, uh, fixing up one of the fields. So that's, that's kind of ties into the list that you put together. I'll shout out. Shout out. Awesome. Thanks. Very good. Uh, any other questions for Paul and open space? And Chris? Uh, hearing them, let's move on to public works. Um, thank, I thank you, Madam chair. We had our meeting on uh, January 6th and uh, a somewhat event, uneventful meeting, uh, very brief, but a uh, couple of items to discuss. Uh, uh, under the police, the police roof at the police station is completed. Uh, there were some repairs that had to be made. Um, and the company that, that, uh, that, that was hired to do the roof came right out and they were very fast to fix the problems and chief is very happy with, uh, with their services. Uh, the bulky waste sta uh, station, um, I don't know. There are a couple of people I think that still have some microphones open. I'm hearing some background music, uh, not music, but just noises. Did everyone just mute their mics if they're not talking? Thanks. Okay. So I get distracted very easily. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So uh, there's going to be a new sign-in system for the bulky waste transfer station. Uh, and that's going to begin on, on February 6th. This is more advanced and this, the new system will have, uh, will be easier to keep track of the number of cars and, and can uh, very well help us to determine if there is a potential for anyone abusing the system. Um, so we're looking forward to that taking place. And from the engineering department, the trail from Lazy Lane to Plainville is uh, the DOT is finally finishing up. There are some impacts to wetlands, so this has to be addressed. Um, so, but uh, Jim Grapone is pretty confident that hopefully by early to late spring, uh, most of this stuff will be completed. So we'll be able to get some work done on that hopefully this year. Uh, the Plantsville Center improvements, Mr. Poulos had asked for some renderings. Because I know it's been a while. We haven't, you know, we've had a bunch of meetings over the last year, but we really haven't had much advancement. Unfortunately, um, I'm once again going to blame the DOT. Uh, they were kind of short staffed throughout the pandemic, but now they're back to work and they're they're finishing up as well. They're just about ready for the 100 percent or the 95 percent plans. Uh, Krog also has to review the plan, so uh, more to follow on that. Hopefully by the next meeting, and uh, the Spring Street to Queen Street turning lane. Uh, there were some drainage issues that were repaired, and we are very close on that as well. Final reviews are happening now, so I know we're all looking forward to that turning lane happening uh, on Spring Street onto Queen. Um, a company was selected to repair the Spring Street Bridge. Um, ACOM is the company that was selected. They've done some work for us in the past, and the town was very happy with their services. So they've been selected to repair the bridge on, uh, on um, Spring Street. And... Uh, our work group to add uh, either some lighting or some or some security to the to the trail uh, has kicked off. Uh, there's a few members from our committee on that, and so they're going to be reporting out at the public works meetings monthly. So I'll be able to report out to the town council how that's going. Are there any questions? Anything, Mr. Pulis or Mr. Chaplinsky wanted to add? I, I have a comment, Council. Yes. Please. Uh, first, I just want to thank the Public Works Committee and Annette and the town manager for for following through on that software issue. I, I know this has been a few years, and when when the Public Works in the past has asked for information or the council, it was always able to be obtained, but I always got the feeling that Annette had to do a little bit more work than she should have. And so that's good to hear that we're upgrading the software and it's going to provide more better information uh, and easier to obtain. Um, and secondly, I believe there's a change, um, slight change with the 2021 transfer station uh, passes. We now have to go to the highway department 
Uh, uh, do you have the specific dates when people can start going for that, or maybe the town manager? Can yeah, sure, you. okay. Yeah, that's been going yeah. on for a few months now. But Mark, okay. that. absolutely. What um, obviously it started with the pandemic, but it turned out to work very, very well for us. As you know, the clerk's office is inundated with many, many other things. So we shifted that responsibility over to the highway department. Um, so that's been going on now for about two, two to three months. But uh, from now, uh, starting, starting now. Uh, the only place you'll be able to get your passes will be the highway department. They're open from 7.30 to 3.30, and they're on Delaware to Drive off of Mulberry Street, just a little almost kitty corner from the AquaTurf. Um, they're, uh, obviously, your passes are still good until the end of March, um, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll report when the new passes are going to be ready. Right, and make sure to get your passes updated so you are not turned away at the transfer station like some of us. I wonder who that could ask. <laughs> like, like myself earlier in the year. Well, there's plenty of room to turn around. They got that nice area right. on the side. So you turn and get well, out of there. Thank, thank you for that. Good stuff. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lombardi. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're muted. Can I ask this? Oh, Val, sure. Do Thanks. You have a question for me? Sure. On the um, the the work for Plantsville, is, is that going to be, is it looking good for the spring or is it going to be pushed maybe to the summer? Have you heard anything on that? We're, Val, we're hoping the, the sign-offs are just about done. Uh, it was DOT. DOT is the reason that everything's behind. And then Krog has to take a look at it. And the problem that, I, I, Mark, I'm not sure of the schedule of Krog these days, but I think they meet every other month. So I'm not sure when their next meeting is, but they have to do a sign off as well, which may delay things a little bit. But we're hoping. Yeah, uh, we're, still, you know, we're still hoping ahead, to, uh, we're still hoping to go out to bid in the spring. Um, originally, it was going to be late winter, early spring. Now we're probably looking at late spring. Um, but obviously, uh, we hope to turn around as much because uh, from a town standpoint, as uh, as the chair just mentioned, uh, we've been ready all along. Um, but as you know, with COVID and people working out of their homes at the state level, it's been very, very difficult. So um, we're hoping to have the go out to bid in late spring and uh, turning that around relatively quickly for uh, construction to start soon thereafter. Great. Thank you. You're muted. Uh, there you go. Uh, well, let's move on to the town manager's report. Thank you, Paul. I think you have Madam, sewer. Madam, yeah, Madam sewer Chair, at the point of order, can I report on sewer? Oh, I'm sorry, Bill. That's right. Well, I guess, okay. ironically, sorry. what go I'm going to report Bill. is that our, so our meeting actually is Thursday. Um, so I don't have an update from the last meeting. Um, so I don't know if we can just carry this agenda item to the next meeting and I'll update then. Sure. No problem. That'd yeah. be fine. Any yeah. questions for Bill? Okay, now we can move on, Mark, to the town manager's <laughs> report. I apologize. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good evening to everybody. Uh, as Mr. Del Santo mentioned, the first item I had is the bridge consulting contract. Uh, this isn't the company that's actually going to const uh, construct it. That's going to be at your next vote. We'll be at your next meeting. Uh, this is the one that we use for consulting. The state of Connecticut and the federal government, which obviously pays the vast majority of these, require a consultant uh, to be there and check. What they're doing is they're almost like our clerk of the works. They're there to make sure that the construction is uh, it happens uh, the way it should. So AECOM, as uh, Mr. Del Santo mentioned, is the recommendation. Uh, that's for $406,000. Uh, also, the Public Works Committee uh, is gonna, has already approved of the uh, construction, but because of the timing issues, I have to wait till the next meeting for you to approve the construction part of it. So that's for AECOM and therefore your construction consultants. Any questions on that? The next item I have is uh, everyone's favorite time of year, which is the budget season. Um, most of you already know this schedule, but for the general public, let me go through how the budget works in the town of Southington. Um, I won't discuss the BOE budget. That's a separate thing, and uh, and, and that's really not in, in your hands until May. So let's, let's talk about what the government budget needs. Every department head has to submit their budget to me uh, by the 8th of January, which was last Friday, which, they, which they've done, except for a couple of uh, uh, department heads who report directly to boards. You have to have a board meeting, so I'll get those uh, this week. Um, I will then uh, meet with every department head, which I will this week and next week, and go over their budgets. Uh, we will then, uh, the, the finance director and I will go over the budgets, we'll go over all the revenue figures, and then we're going to wait, obviously, to the second Wednesday of February uh, when the governor gives his speech and uh, will recommend what uh, state aid the town of Southington will get. That's important because that's a very big revenue item for us. 
So once that happens, I put my budget together and I, I report it to the Board of Finance no later than February 18th. At that point, the Board of Finance will take a look at it. We'll meet with myself, the finance director and other department heads, and then we'll hold a public uh, hearing. Now, I, I, I have it. Normally, we hold our public hearing at Powell Middle School, but depending where we are in the COVID stage, it may be a public hearing uh, to the WebEx system. So at this point, it's scheduled at the Apollo, um, but we're going to play that by ear, uh, depending on what happens by Mar March 1st. After the public hearing, the Board of Finance then does its workshops, and they will vote on a recommended budget to the Town Council on March 31st of this year. At that point, the Council then reviews it, and the Council will hold a public hearing. Uh, right now, that's scheduled for the Municipal Center, but like I said before, depending on where the world is in April, that may also be a WebEx meeting, and that's for April 26, 2021. Uh, the council first further deliberates and then by charter you must act on the budget no later than may 10th 2021. Uh, you then uh, pass a budget uh, which includes not only the government budget but it's also going to include the capital budget and the board of education budget and the smaller budgets like uh, animal control and sewer etc at that point you pass a budget it goes to the board the board of finance uses calculations to figure out what the new, new mill rate is in the town of southington so that's where we're going. We're just in the beginning stage and uh, we have several months of work ahead of us. Answer any questions you have there. Anybody have any questions? That was very clear, Mark. Oh, thank you. I just um, have one, one comment. I'm sorry. Quick, for the town manager. Uh, I would just uh, make the comment or suggestion that uh, we plan on broadcasting the presentations via some sort of um, digital method WebEx, even if it's held in person. Because I think there might be residents that would want to um, join in on on the informational sessions, um, whether we decide to have them in person or not. So I I would suggest which, that Jason, Jason, which sessions are you talking about, Tom? The the budget hearings um, that that you mentioned in your schedule. Okay. Yeah. The uh, the, the budget normally what we would do is the uh, the budget hearings for the uh, department heads you're talking about. Because the, the board of ed and the and the, and the bar department heads, we could uh, we could see if we can webex those meetings. Like yeah, the public hearings, the, the one on March first. Oh the well, yeah, those are absolutely going to be. Yeah, if they're not if they're not going to be uh, in if they're not in person. But I, I agree with you. Even if it is in person, we'll do a webex also for people. Yeah, who yeah, that that's all. Yeah, that's no problem. Thanks. The municipal center. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. The municipal center uh, upgrade is perfect for that. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get me started, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just want to uh, clarify, Tom, are you talking about the workshop sessions? So not the public hearings, but when um, the um, people start to workshop the budget, is that what you're uh, suggesting we should live stream? Because I would agree with that. I'm yeah. not sure those workshops are always live streamed. If, it, if we're able to do it, I think... The, yeah. the more the more people that can have input and information, the better. I, I couldn't agree more, Councilman Lombardi. If we could do that, I'd like to see it happen. Yeah, the board of the board of finance workshops themselves are never on. Uh, they're they're not meetings. They're workshops. So they're never televised. But if you're talking about obviously all the public hearings and all that, whether whether we have them in person, they're going to be in person and on TV. Whether it be WebEx, uh, as we're all set up to do that. But we have to get clearance to do that for the uh, from the health district. If we don't, then we're going to have everything done. Un unfortunately, like we're doing it right now. Okay, well, okay. we'll see. Yep. The, um, the the next item I have, and uh, I'm very happy to say, obviously, COVID uh, had uh, slowed this down, is our rank and file union, uh, which is the town hall and all our outer buildings. Uh, and I have come to an agreement on a budget. Excuse me, on a uh, on a union contract. Uh, this is a long time in coming, mainly because of COVID, not because of anything else. Uh, with that being said, uh, they have agreed to the uh, to the same contract terms that uh, the other unions have agreed to prior to the COVID situation. Uh, so uh, you have the synopsis in front of you. Uh, year number one is 2.25, year number two is 2.25, and year number uh, three is two for a total of 6.5. Uh, they have agreed to the same uh, increases in insurance that the other unions have done, and they've also agreed uh, to the increase in the prescriptions. Uh, as with all union contracts, we look over all the job titles, and there were several, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, that the job titles were so old and the people were doing substantially more than their job titles. So we'd agreed to uh, bump up 
uh, I think there's six of them, uh, six titles total uh, from a, uh, to a different grade. So with that in mind, um, obviously, uh, I don't have to tell you how proud I am of my employees over the last the last year uh, working through this. But um, I'm very happy to say that we have a collective bargaining agreement in place. Uh, uh, of course, with your ratification, which would run through June uh, 30th, 2022. Happy to answer any questions that you have. I really just had a statement, Mark, and that is I I, uh, I want to just thank uh, the rank and file, and because I think we see that it was a real um, a real team effort to get to this point, and uh, I appreciate they work so hard. They're right at the front. They're right at the front. They they receive our our citizens. They help our citizens. They uh, walk through difficult things with our citizens, and we just appreciate. All of their effort, and even in this negotiation, we uh, uh, we appreciate their willingness to work with us and come to this conclusion. So I just wanted to extend that to mm -hmm. our uh, to our town employees. Any other questions, Madam Chair? I uh, do not. Does anyone okay. else have any? I see none. Mark, go ahead. Okay. The next item I have for many of you, um, I bring this to you every year. Uh, the EMPG grant, which is the Emergency Management Grant, which is um, uh, which is used to offset emergency management salaries. Uh, obviously, we have an emergency management director. I work in emergency management. Mr. Baker works in emergency management. So we fill out, I shouldn't say we, Lara fills out a very large form every year, and the uh, and the state uh, offsets some of that. Our, our uh, average is somewhere around $40,000 each year, and we've been doing this oh, probably for the last 10 or 12 years. Uh, so uh, any questions on that? Okay. All right. Uh, we do have executive session uh, tonight, Madam Chair. There'll be no no action outside of executive session. Okay. And that's my report. Thank you very much. Any other questions for the town manager? Thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, Attorney Taylor, it's your turn. Uh, Jeremy, I think your mic is off. I can't hear you. Nothing yet. There he is. No, I don't think so. Paul, there's nothing you can do on your end, huh? No. No, his uh, his mic is unmuted, so I'm un I'm unsure why we can't hear him. You may have to log off and log back on. Or maybe the volume is down. I don't know. If you have a headset or something, Jeremy, maybe you can unplug it and just go through your computer mic. Or the other thing, Jeremy, maybe you can call in, keep the video, but call in so we can hear you. If you want to do that, yep, yep. We'll wait. Madam Chair, you want me to pinch hit? Uh, yes, if, if you okay. could join me, that's all right. It happens to all of us at one time or another. Um, all right. The, uh, pinch hit. Uh, the, the, first, the first item is an 824 referral uh, from planning and zoning back to the town council. Uh, at your last meeting, you, uh, you sent it to the planning and zoning. You saw that in here, the planning and zoning commission uh, unanimously approved the purchase for $45,000. The second item would be the actual vote on the contract itself, which was in your packet. 
Uh, the next item uh, is a referral for a contract uh, for 766 South Main Street. That's a referral to planning and zoning. Obviously, planning and zoning under 8-24 would look at it and then send back a recommendation to your board. Very good. Uh, any questions on uh, no questions. <laughs> <laughs> no questions. report that we that we're looking at right now? <laughs> it's easy. Um, I I do have a question. <laughs> I I don't know if I should wait for for. Uh, yeah, why, why don't you wait for the action part of it? That way you can ask it to the yeah, town attorney. I'll wait yeah. for the action, then I'll bring it up to the town attorney at that point. Okay, Thanks. very good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go into public communication right now, uh, and hopefully Jeremy's sound is going to come on, and we're going to be really good. Um, uh, public communication, Paul, we're going to do anybody on the computer first, and then we'll follow up with anybody on the phone. Is that correct? That's correct, Madam Chair. Okay, so go ahead, Paul. Will you take it over? Yep, if there's anybody that's on the computer that can unmute themselves and would like to speak during public communications, please go ahead and do that now. Unmute yourself and please go ahead and give your name and address for the record. Anybody on the computer, give your name and address for the record and unmute yourself if you'd like to speak during public communication. Okay, Madam Chair, I don't, I don't see any phone uh, callers, but if there are any phone callers that we don't see, um, and you would like to speak during public communications, press star six now to unmute yourself and speak during public communications. Star six for anybody who's calling in. Okay, Madam Chair, seems that nobody's gonna speak tonight. Okay, um, so uh, we will uh, continue. Uh, I thought I saw Jeremy back on, but I guess, uh, oh, I think he's on the phone. Is is Jeremy on the phone? No. Anyway, he's still silent. We can't hear him. Okay. Uh, so uh, we're going to continue. Let's go to old business action on the bridge consulting contract. Do I have a motion? So move, Madam Chair. I'll second. Thank you, Val. And Chris seconded it. Very good. Uh, um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh, Are there any opposed? Sorry, I was I was muted, but I am a yes vote. Sorry. Anybody opposed? Anybody uh, abstaining? Hearing none, we'll mark this as a unanimous yes vote on this. Thank you, everybody. The action on the union contract item D. So moved, Madam Chair. It's Mike Del Santo. Mike yeah, says second. yes. Paul, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, Chris. Paul had his hand up. He did. Oh, sure, sure. Then. But Paul, Paul uh, will second it. All those in favor for the union contract, signify by saying uh, aye. 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 Uh, is there anyone opposed to the union contract? Hearing none, and there, I don't believe there's any abstentions. We will mark this as a yes, a unanimous yes vote. Thank you. Uh, on the action for the emergency management. Uh, uh, resolution. May I have a, a motion, please? Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the, the resolution set forth in our package. Uh, I'll second, second that, Madam Chair. Chris, you're going to second that. So, uh, all those roll in call, favor. Please. Roll, roll call, please. Oh, yes. Okay. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, Kathy, please? Del Santo? Yes. Yes. Hello. Yes. Dita. Morelli. Yes. Palmeri. Yes. Ulis. Yes. Lombardi. Yes. Chaplinski. Yes. Triano. Yes, it's unanimous uh, for that resolution. Thank you, everybody. Um, uh, Okay, uh, Chris, you're going to recuse yourself. I need to uh, on, on so, item for... D and on item E, I believe. Is that correct? Yes, okay. Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's move on to item D, an action on the 824 from, uh, from planning and zoning for the property on 196 Prospect Street. Do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to approve. 
I'll second. El Santo. Okay, and Paul, you're going to second that. Yes, Paul? Madam Chair. Okay, very good. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor. Can, can, can I just yes, make a discussion? Just be yes. um, because I don't I don't remember if this was said here or an executive session or whatnot. But now that it's public, the great piece of the great part about this piece of land is it's a, adjacent to existing open space and an elementary school. So there is parking and access um, to this piece of land. So just want to put that on the record before we vote. Excellent. Thank you. Any other comments? Yeah, Paul. Yeah, I would just echo that, you know, the, the, the uh, Oceana uh, school property that exists today prior to this currently has a nature of uh, uh, part of their curriculum that they use their existing property uh, for that brings the children outdoors. They have actually seating and areas to stand and discuss with nature uh, components labeled. Um, this actually is um, butts up. So it'll expand the opportunity for the students to uh, um, to use even more areas and explore maybe some of the water course that's there. Uh, and it also is a, a buffer along a, a significant portion of the Oceana property. Uh, so, you know, I'm hopeful that maybe some of the other schools might consider using some of that in the nature uh, preserve that's there in the future or any resident that wants to. And I want to say a thank you to uh, the Donahue family for uh, engaging with us and um, Working with us uh, on a uh, on a price, I think that was um, uh, that was good for all parties. So thank you. Very good. Yes, Jim. I just wanted to echo that that I, I think for all those reasons it was an excellent excellent purchase for us. And uh, again, I think the Donahue family did us a favor by working favorably for the town uh, and, and the community. So thanks again to the, to everybody. Very good. All right, are we ready to move the motion? All those who uh, 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 approve of uh, uh, the item signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed to the motion? And we have one abstention from Chris Poulos. So we are unanimous and one abstention from Chris. Okay. Um, okay, uh, action. Uh, we're on item. We're on item F now, I believe, right? E, e, e. e. separate I'm motion sure. for E. Yep. Uh, e. Oh. Um, the motion. Pull has got to beat it. Um, uh, the motion to uh, approve the contract for 196 Prospect Street. Yeah, sorry, I missed that. Second, I'll second that, sir. Madam Chair. Okay, okay, I think Val seconded it first. So, um, all right, so, uh, we have a motion on the floor. Any discussion? Just for the record, it's forty-five thousand dollars. The contract. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Once again, it's unanimous. However, Mr. Poulos has abstained from this. Item F, action on 824 referral from planning and zoning for 766 South Main Street. Do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to, uh, to approve, uh, um, send the 824 referral to planning and zoning for 766 South Main Street. I'll send that, Madam Chair. Second. El Santo. El Santo is going to uh, second it. Very good. Is there any discussion on this motion? Yes, Chris. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I just would like to take a moment uh, to share some thoughts on the significance of this acquisition. To me, um, it is a win 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 for the town and our residents. It's a win, I think, most importantly, because the town owning this parcel will, it will give us the ability to address a major traffic safe a major traffic safety concern we have there, which which is timely because we're about to enter a long awaited safety improvement project in, in Plantsville. It's a win because we're gonna be able to improve and beautify an unsightly gravel lot in a historic part of our town. And it's a win because through beautification and safety improvement, I believe we're gonna attract more people to the village of Plantsville. Residents or visitors from out of town who will patronize local businesses and contribute to the economic development of the area. You know, I was thinking that there may not be superlatives to describe the features of this acquisition. 
It's not, a, it's not large compared to other recent open space acquisitions, nor is it a wildlife corridor or farmland with an orchard or roaming horses. But rather, I see it as a small little diamond yet to be polished into attractive, an attractive suburban feature that will improve the quality of life for our residents for the reasons I mentioned. And on one last note, I would be remiss if I did not personally thank the Zomer family on behalf of this council for working with us and our town staff over the last year on the sale, agreeing to a price of this important parcel. Our meetings were thoughtful. They never wavered from their vision of beautifying Plantsville and supporting local businesses. They were firm that the intended use of the parcel should be a parklet. And ultimately they agreed, they're agreeing in this contract that we're sending over to um, planning and zoning for a price of nearly $26,000 less than its valued purchase. And that made it, that, that makes it more uh, manageable for the town to acquire. You know, the Zomers have contributed for decades in Plantsville. They introduced Halloween in the village. They've decorated that corner a lot for many holidays over the years. They were involved in the, the, the village association and Christmas in the village since their inception. And some of us who were here, all of us were here as young people, will remember the condemned grocery store that stood where the clock tower and the gazebo and the fountain are currently located. They worked with former councilman Bill DiPaolo and a local developer to gentrify that into what it is today. I could go on and on, but I think these examples further evidence the Zomer family's legacy in Plantsville. They have been committed for many years to the improvement of the area, and for that I'm grateful. I think as a council we're grateful, and I wanted to submit that to the record as we move this motion. Very Thank nice, you. Chris. Thank you. Are there any, any other comments on this? Uh, Tom, did you want to mention something? Sure. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just had a few comments that I, and, and, you know, I will agree with what Councilman Poulos just ended with in terms of the Zomer family. And, you know, they are certainly great, um, great assets to the, to the Plantsville and overall community. But just let's keep one thing in mind. When we purchase lands or development rights or whatever it is, it, it shouldn't matter who's selling the land. We, are, we, we aren't buying this because the Zomers are selling it. We're buying it for the reasons that Councilman Poulos said at the beginning of his statement, for for the reasons that we think it, you know, improvements for beautification, and we think we can do some safety improvements. That's the reason we're buying it. We're not buying it because the Zomers are selling it. But I want to make one point to the council. And when this comes back from planning and zoning, I think we should have some pretty um, direct answers on these, whether it be from the town attorney or the town manager. There, right now, there's a lot of parking going on there. And and I want to make sure that when this closes in the name of the town, what are our specific rules that we're going to have down there? What's our timeline? So we should have that because we can't just have it continue operating the way that it is. So those those are the comments um, that I that I'll I'll put on the record and and it is also you know there's been a lot of talks about safety down there about drunk people driving in late at night and, and things like that so let's make sure that any designs obviously you can't design for drunk drivers but let's let's make sure that we're um, we're really factoring all those things in so but those are the comments I I just wanted to out there. Thank you, Tom. Uh, are there any other comments from any council people? Yes, Valerie. Madam Chair, I just had a question on the contract. Um, I don't know if, if uh, the town attorney is able to um, speak with us yet, but maybe Mark can answer it as well. So in the contract, we have that a, a, as a condition of the transfer, the deed's going to have specific language for the intended use of the of the parcel. Is so is the language in the contract? Is that pretty much what will be on the deed? Jeremy, are you on? Can, I, can you hear that? She wanted to know if the uh, the uh, language in the contract would be also stipulated in the deed. Yeah. And I guess the reason I'm asking that is to piggyback a little bit on Councilman. Lombardi, the, the issue with the improved, you know, improving the, the safety, the traffic safety there, uh, because that will be, it will be a specific condition of the, of the transfer. 
And then it also looks to be that if it's ever going to be changed, it would be by vote of, of the town council. Right. Yeah, I could I could answer. I mean, Jeremy, if he's not on, I could answer that. Obviously, um, I did read the contract. I didn't write it, but I read it. Um, and I still have a little bit of legal knowledge left after not doing it for so long. But uh, yes, to answer your question, that would be a responsibility to, uh, of the town of Southington that if it changes from a parklet, I believe it's said in there, then it would be an affirmative vote of the council, five members in open session if they want to change in the future, which is pretty standard for most. We, we usually don't have to spell it out. Um, but in this particular case, I think it was important for the, uh, the property owners uh, and the council that we do spell that out. Uh, so obviously the council is the ultimate authority on all property of the town of Southington. So that would be a, a normal process. But to answer your question, that particular restriction would uh, would be on the deed in most cases. Uh, Jeremy, of course, would be the final authority on that. Okay. Can, can you hear me at all? Oh, there you yes, are. Yes, there you are. Go ahead, Jeremy. Right, right after Mark finished all his big speech there, which he was, he was right on. So um, I'm sorry, I heard part of what you were asking. Um, the specific language we were there about making it a partlet and um, having the town council vote if they wanted to change that, that would be something that we would have in the deed. It's in the contract, so that would be something that would be transferred into the deed. Okay, and I think that's important, as I said, getting back to Councilman Lombardi's concern about the safety, you know, it, at least it's, it's in the deed and it's a condition of the transfer. I'm sure, that would be something that a, a future council would have to take into consideration when they made a vote. Just as an aside, um, the eventual design of it um, goes through the Public Works Committee and to the council. Uh, the design is being done uh, internally uh, when we start the process. Obviously, we'll give the green light, assuming the council moves forward uh, with, this, with, with this project. Uh, we'll give that, but everything is going to be done uh, staff wise, which we may need some experts to help us out a little bit. And then like everything else we do, it has to go to the public works committee for their input and then their recommendation to the council. The final design is, is of course, in the council's uh, vote. Very good. Uh, any other comments Thank you. before we bring it to vote? I'm going to ask for a voice vote on this so everyone can, uh, can speak their, their vote. That would be wonderful. So, um, so Chris and Tom, Chris made the motion, Tom seconded it, so let's no, take the vote. No, Mike, Mike Santo. Madam Chair, Mike Del Mike Santo. Santo. Del Santo was the second. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> I had time. Sure. Good, okay, very good, Mike, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so let's move the motion. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Well, the, the motion is to uh, to uh, uh, go forward with the A24 from planning and zoning. Go ahead. Del Santo? Yes. Paolo? Yes. Dizek? Morelli? Yes. Carhan? Yes. Poulos? Yes. Lombardi? Yes. Chaplinski? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Madam Chair, was that Councilman Dizek was an abstain, I believe, right? Yeah. I yeah. believe so, yes. Yeah. Okay, very good. Um, thank you, everybody. Moving on to appointment. Um, tax refunds first. And tax refunds first. You're right, Chris. That's right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, I, Madam Chair. I would make a motion that we approve the tax refund that's outlined in our packet. Second. Madam Chair, this is Bill. Second. Okay. Go ahead, Bill. Good. Is in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous, I believe. Uh, it passes unanimously. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, let's move on to the appointments, uh, starting with uh, uh, item one, the regional health district. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes, Mike. Yes, Madam Chair, I'd like to nominate Anne Marie Kennedy for the position, the Regional Health District. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second, Madam Chair. This Thank Paul. you, Paul. Um, all those in favor? Uh, you no, better, I, yes, no, go, I, ahead. go ahead. I, I, I'd like to nominate Kelly. Okay, very good. Very good. Okay, thank you, Chris. Is there a second to Kelly Morrissey? Chris Poole? Madam Chair, I'll second. Okay. Chris, I, I saw your hand, but Val, I'm going to call Val's 
for the second. Okay. Go to Val. Uh, so <laughs> what we're going to do on this, we're going to um, uh, say the name of the person that we're voting for for this position. So, Madam Chair, would you call, uh, Madam uh, Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Del Santo. Conaty. DePaolo. Morrissey. Dijek. Conaty. Morelli. I abstain. Almero. Morrissey. Poulos. Morrissey. Lombardi. Kennedy. Chaplinsky. Kennedy. Triano. Kennedy. Uh, Anne Marie Kennedy has that position. Thank you, everybody, and uh, and I want to thank also uh, uh, Kelly. She's worked very hard in that position. I appreciate her time. Uh, all right, uh, item number two, the Senior Citizen Commission. Uh, Madam Chair. Madam, yes, Tom. I'll put forth the name of Connie Pearl for the Senior Citizen Commission. Okay. Madam, Madam Chair, I'll Chair. second that. Del Santo. Very good. Uh, are there any other names that we put, want to put forth? Okay. Um, uh, let's, uh, let's just go forward uh, with uh, all those in favor. Uh, for uh, Connie Pro for the Senior Citizen Commission, signify. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposition? Okay, it, it carries unanimously. Thank you. Um, the I'm going to need a a table on the ethics alternate. May I have a, a motion? So move, Madam Chair Del Santo. Second. Anybody? Second. Thank you, Paul. Uh, all those in favor for a table signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed to that? There is none, so it, it, it's uh, unanimous. Thank you. Um, the uh, cable, uh, the cable TV uh, advisory committee, uh, one one member. Uh, Madam, that. Madam Chair, this is Jim. Yeah. I, I'd like to put forward Michael Petruzzi for that position. Petruzzi, do I have I'll a second? I'll second, Madam Chair Del Santo. Thank you, Mike. Uh, very good. Uh, uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, everybody. Uh, so, Michael will take that position. Um, also, on the Apple Harvest Advisory Committee, there is an opening because Barbara Roberts, Bar Bar Barbara Roberts has stepped off. And um, I'd like to um, have a motion for that, Tom. Matt, Madam Chair, I'd like to put forth uh, a name that is familiar to most of us on here uh, working with the Apple Harvest, the name of Jim Champagne for the Apple Harvest Advisory Board. Oh, second. Thank you, Chris, that's great. Um, so we have Jim Champagne, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed to Jim? I don't think so. <laughs> so Jim back in knowledge. business at the Apple Heart. And that's going to be great. Um, I just want to say uh, that also on the Apple Harvest Festival Committee, there may be an opportunity uh, if if we don't want to change the whole construction of the Apple Harvest Festival Committee, but sometimes you get people that have a uh, great deal of knowledge in a certain area or whatever. And we can certainly consider that on both sides, on the Democratic side as well as the Republican side. If there's someone that we feel uh, might want to walk alongside the Apple Harvest Festival Committee and 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 uh, um, give of their time and expertise, uh, we can certainly do that and certainly consider those folks. We uh, uh, It's already a very good uh, uh, committee, but uh, we're always looking for new ideas and everything. So I just want to throw that out. Uh, we are, uh, uh, we're, uh, this is a committee that uh, uh, is quite active and it's a fun committee. So if we want to extend it at least till November and then the person or persons would have to be reconsidered as a special uh, uh, seat. So anyway, all right. May I have a, a motion uh, to go into executive session? Uh, uh, I'm going to uh, invite uh, uh, the members. Madam Chair, could I, could I do this one? Um, yes. 
Okay, well, we're going to have an executive session. It's going to be in three parts. Uh, the first part, we're inviting in members of the library board to discuss real estate. Um, after they're excused, we're going to have the uh, interim uh, fire chief and the chairman of the fire board to discuss personnel. And then after they're dismissed, uh, we'll have the council, myself, and attorney Taylor discussing a personnel matter, and then we'll adjourn. So that's it. May I have a motion? So move. I see that. Second. Coolest. And, and uh, Jim seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, everyone, for coming out to our meeting. And uh, we will not be coming back into uh, regular sessions. So we'll see you on the other side. Thank you, everybody.